Hey, Nerking101 here. If you liked the video, please give it a like. You can follow me on Twitter, which is linked in the description box down below. And if you would like to see more videos like this one, you can support the channel by donating to my PayPal, which is linked in the description box down below. There are roughly 710 chapters in the Naruto manga, and multiple storylines that stretch across multiple different story arcs. However, not all these story arcs are gems, however, only one, I believe, truly stands as the worst story arc in the entire show. And while the arc does have very good high points, I believe the lows of the arc far outweigh the high points. I am talking about the Kage Summit arc. The five Kage Summit arc stretches from chapters 454 to 483 of the Naruto manga, and episodes 197 to 214 of the Naruto Shippuden anime. Not to start off entirely negative, this arc does have some redeeming qualities. The actual summit between the five Kage is incredible, it's amazing. It's some of the coolest stuff in the show, especially because we really don't get to see the politics of the Naruto world very often. And getting to see the world leaders in Naruto get together and talk and see all these powerful Kage that have been hyped up the entire show in person is awesome and helps build to a sense of finality for the final story arc. Saki vs. Danzo is one of the best fights in the show, especially in the anime. The anime does an amazing job adapting that sequence from the manga. Saki's fights and interaction with the five Kage are also great. Madara's declaration of war, the origin of the Ten Tails, and more lore for the stage of the Sith Path, that stuff is all gold. And it does a fabulous job of setting up the fourth great Shinobi War arc. However, everything falls apart the moment Sakura's role in the arc begins. From the very moment Sai shows up and starts telling Sakura about Naruto's feelings for her, you're immediately left to know that something is very wrong. Because the contest simply doesn't make any sense. Sai basically verbally abuses Sakura, telling her Naruto promised to her is a curse. That right there is where the arc lost me. Even the first time I was watching it, I remember watching the scene with Sakura and Sai and not really taking it very seriously. In a moment where I was supposed to feel bad for Sakura, I more thought she was an idiot. But then, the more I reread it over the years, the more I realized this isn't poor characterization of Sakura. The way Sakura responds to these scenarios does feel like how Sakura responds to them. The only problem is that there's no reason these things should ever happen. First of all, on the matter of Sai, I think it just makes him look bad and undermines his character development. He is incredibly cruel with the way he talks to Sakura in this scene. The way he goes about explaining it to her, basically blaming her for Naruto's pain and making her feel guilty about the things Naruto's gone through for Sasuke is just terrible. But once again, while bad isn't really 100% um, out of character for Sai, it does undermine his development, but it's not out of character. However, Sakura's reaction isn't either, but Sakura is still the problem because Sakura is aware of the fact that Naruto sees Sasuke as his best friend and his brother. That core point right there that Sakura had stated before in the manga that she is aware of Naruto and Sasuke's relationship and that Naruto has his own reason for wanting to save Sasuke is why the story arc falls apart. Be it all of Sakura's actions, every single action she takes in this arc basically relies on the fact that Naruto is only going after Sasuke because he's in love with her. Which not only does it make sense because Sakura is aware that that is not true, also makes Sakura look like a complete idiot. Sakura is fully aware of the relationship Naruto and Sasuke have, which is what makes the scene so frustrating to watch. I mean, throughout the entire scene, Sai is telling her how it's all her fault and how her promise to Naruto is a curse, even though Sakura knows that that's complete nonsense. Many fans use the fake confession to attack the character, however, Sakura did do the confession to protect Naruto. It's partly why the arc is so terrible, because the reasons for her doing anything in it don't make sense. The actions aren't the problem, it's the fact that there's no reason for her to take them at all. Sakura's confession to Naruto in The Land of Iron does actually come from a place of genuine love for Naruto. It's not romantic love, but it is made evidently clear throughout the show Sakura does love Naruto as a member of her own family, so her actions here do make sense. She's trying to protect somebody that she loves dearly, 
from somebody else that she loves dearly who has gone down a path she doesn't believe he can return from. The problem is, once again, Sakura in this arc is acting as if she doesn't know that Naruto is going to keep chasing after Sasuke anyway. At one point during her confession, she even says he can let go of the promise between them, which is shocking to me, because I don't see what that has to do with anything. Sai and Sakura have this nonsensical idea that doesn't make sense for either character, but especially for Sakura, that the only reason Naruto is going after Sasuke is because of Sakura. The entire confession is basically built around that, and the problem is, is that the entire scene is built around something that just doesn't make sense. It's a plot hole. A lot of Sakura haters like to say that she was just going to dump Naruto as soon as the plan was done and she didn't need to do the fake relationship thing anymore. But I don't actually think that's the case. Watching the scene, Sakura does seem genuinely interested in pursuing a relationship with Naruto after she returned from killing Sasuke. This isn't a relationship that she's faking and has no level of emotional investment in at all. She is emotionally invested in it. You can tell because she is actually offended when Naruto rejects her. Naruto rejection does very clearly make her upset and offend her. Which leads me to believe that she was going to stick through with what she was saying. If Naruto had accepted her confession, she would have been with him. So confession isn't the problem. It's the fact that she's trying to use it to make Naruto do something that has nothing to do with the relationship between the two of them. There is zero connection between the relationship between Naruto and Sakura and the relationship between between Naruto and Sasuke beyond the fact that they're all on the same team and that they all consider each other friends. Even in Boruto, it is very clear that Naruto and Sakura have the relationship completely independent of their relationship from Sasuke. The two things aren't connected at all. Boruto and Sarada literally think this. They've been friends since childhood because their parents hang out a lot. And Sakura's actions here set up the finale of the arc, the Team 7 reunion, in which everybody goes into that acting wildly out of character. Moving on to Sasuke, Throughout the entire arc, he's probably the best part of it, until he reunites with Team 7, in which Kichimoto takes the crazy Sasuke thing up to 11, making him much harder to redeem. In fact, whenever people talk about whether or not Sasuke is redeemable, this is really the only thing people talk about, is like, the final couple chapters of this story arc, and how he goes way too off the deep end. His attempt to murder Sakura is out of character even for him because it's just a straight up backstab. Even though Sasuke it has been characterized for most of the show as somebody with some level of integrity on the battlefield at the very least, who does treat his opponents with some level of respect and definitely doesn't seem like the kind of guy who attacks people from behind before even starting a confrontation. He does an evil laugh at some point, like a straight up psychopath, joker-esque, diabolical, madman, evil laugh. Hell, Kichimoto even retroactively makes Sakura look stupid because the poison that she tries to kill Sasuke with isn't deadly. Now, I actually don't have much of a problem with Sakura trying to kill Sasuke, because the last time she saw Sasuke, they didn't fight, and he wasn't that much more powerful than she would be if she unleashed the 100 healing seal. If she unleashed 100 healing earlier in the story during her fight with Sasuke, she probably could actually take by Kage Sama Sasuke. If she activated 100 healing, she's definitely beating the version of Sasuke she and Naruto reunited with in the beginning of part 2. So Sakura planning to go confront Sasuke and stab him with a poison kunai is perfectly logical. Until we turn it into a gag and we find out that the poison doesn't take effect immediately or have any effect for multiple minutes. It takes at the very least long enough for him to get stabbed in the cheek with her kunai and then have an entire clash and conversation with Sasuke for like five minutes possibly. The plan just doesn't make any logical sense. Why would Sakura create a poison kunai that doesn't take its death for like five minutes until after she stabs somebody to fight a guy that she isn't 100% sure she can take. While it's a funny scene, the gag does, in theory, really mess up Sakura's plan and make her look kind of like a moron. 
like most of this arc does for Sakura. Which once more had nothing to do with her fake conception and more to do with a lot of the things she does just not making any sense and not being very smart. And Sakura is supposed to be the smart one! Naruto also has this really weird scene earlier in the arc where he like starts hyperventilating when he finds out Sakura is going to kill Sasuke and he like passes out in the cold and it's not necessarily a bad scene, but the way it's approached just makes Naruto look really pathetic. The fake confession is also never addressed, like, at all. Like, Sakura fakes confessing love to Naruto, and it's just never brought up again at all. Like, it is a fake confession, because he was still in love with Sasuke, and she was saying she wasn't. That was a lie. Her Sakura saying she no longer loved Sasuke was a lie, and the fact that she lied about that to Naruto is never brought up again. And also, Naruto flat out mentioned the truth about Itachi, and Sakura is never told. It's very easy to forget that Sakura, as far as we are aware, never finds out until she, I guess until she marries the guy, the, the truth about Itachi. Until she marries Sasuke, I mean, I, she's never told. I guess you could argue that maybe Naruto told her at some point. Like, you could reasonably assume that Naruto would be the kind of guy he is. Uh, all about friendship and trust and the power of love and friendship and all that crap. That he would pull her aside when they got back and tell her the truth about Itachi. But I don't, there's no evidence in the show to support that. But I remember when Naruto mentioned truth about Itachi, there's a scene in the arc where Sakura reacts to that being like, what the hell is he talking about? That you would think is like setting something up with him and Sakura. Like, is there going to be a moment when Naruto and Sakura like discuss? how they feel about the village, like, is there gonna be a moment when they discuss with each other the truth of Itazi, where they have a conversation about it, and, like, how that affects how they're gonna save Sasuke, like, you would think Sakura's reaction, but that that there's an actual thing where she reacts to that in the series, meant that there would be some kind of interest in, uh, developing that and going somewhere with that, but no, Sakura learning the truth of Itazi is never brought up again. It just implies that she's going to ask about it later because she's surprised. That's it. And Kakashi's all talk here. He shows up, fights Sasuke for a little bit, trying to take responsibility, and then Naruto grabs him from behind. Sakura cries out his name and he charges Sasuke and they have a class and they do a Rasengan Shidori class. Literally, Kakashi just saves Sakura, talks about how this is all his fault, and then apologizes to Sakura for lying to her like two, three hundred chapters ago. Says he's going to stop Sasuke, and then gets manhandled by Naruto, who goes and fights Sasuke on his own. Now, don't get me wrong, there are highlights to this sequence. The, the, the conversation between Naruto and Sasuke is great. The what if our roles are reversed the scene is great, especially in the anime. But the action taken specifically by Sasuke and Sakura do not make any sense. Once again, I actually do buy Sasuke grabbing Sakura by the throat and trying to cut her with a kunai and slit her throat. That I buy. I buy Sasuke would do that because she engaged him in combat and he responded. But his little trick with Karin in the beginning of that sequence, when he goes up behind her while she's going to go heal Karin and goes to attack her with a Shidori, that I don't buy. That's not something Sasuke would do, even this version of Sasuke, that is despicable, it, it does feel out of character, it doesn't even match what action she takes later. And that's another problem, the Sasuke that is set up at the end of this arc when he's like laughing maniacally, that Sasuke never comes back. Never. He never comes back. That Sasuke is gone and we're back to like, re slightly more crazy and radicalized but regular demeanor Sasuke in his next appearance. He goes, he's like, give me a Tachi die, and then bama kabama, we're back to regular Sasuke! So it's like, what the hell was this? Why does everybody have to act so out of character? Why is everybody so crazy? I don't know, but I'm not a fan of this arc. I just don't like it. I do not like the Faikage Summit arc once, well, you know once Naruto and Sakura start being in the arc, I stop liking it. Which is normally not the case, because I'm a big fan of Sasuke, but normally my favorite parts of the show are the parts with Naruto, Sakura, Kakashi, and all the other main characters. Like, I like Sasuke a lot, but I must prefer him in Boruto or when he's redeemed to when he's a crazy villain. Or like at the end of the show when he's like a pseudo anti-hero. But Crazy Sasuke is my least favorite version of the character, but still 
He's the best part of this arc at the very least, because at least he's not that big a deal. The Naruto's fine, but Naruto's very much reactive in this arc. So like, yes, Sakura, nothing she does in this arc makes any sense. Sasuke acts completely out of character in a way that it's never brought up again. It would be one thing if this would be new status quo for Sasuke going forward. That would be a different story. But no, this is just an abnormality. Sasuke never acts like this again in the show. Okay, and Naruto just spends the whole arc reacting to things. He spends it like telling Sakura he literally Naruto does like five things in this arc. He bounced to the Raikage, he tossed to Madara, he tells Sakura he ate people who lied to themselves and were just a fake confession. He passes out in the snow, and then he goes and he fights Sasuke once. And, and he gives a, a speech about how they're both gonna die. That's it! That's all Naruto does! And most of these things only last like an episode. Naruto's barely in this arc in a, any meaningful way. It's really Sakura and Sasuke's arc. At the very least, Sasuke gets that Kage Summit portion when he's at the Appa Summit to be really cool and act like Sasuke and get a couple awesome fights. Sakura doesn't get any fights because, you know, as a criticism of the whole show as a whole, Sakura needs more fights. But she doesn't get any fights and none of her actions make any sense. So lo and behold, this is the worst arc in the show. And the thing is, I like Sakura. I, she's awesome. I love Sakura. She's a great character. I like Sasuke too. I like them both. They're awesome. Sakura is my favorite female character in the show and probably my second favorite character next to Naruto. My third favorite probably being like Sarada, my fourth Madara, and maybe like my fifth would be Sasuke. So like, I'm surprised that I'm the person saying this. But, like, this arc in particular, they're my two least favorite parts of it. And not even because I feel like the things, particularly with Sakura, are things Sakura wouldn't do. It just, I just don't feel like the context makes any sense. Because the core reason behind all Sakura's actions is something that just doesn't make sense. Because as I said multiple times in the video, Sakura would never do half of these things. Because Sakura knows Naruto considers Sasuke his best friend and a brother. So yeah, I think this arc is pretty nonsensical, I don't think it makes any sense, I think most of the characters behave wildly out of character, either out of character, or in ways that don't make any sense based on context, or in ways that don't make any sense based on the way they act for the rest of the series. So yes, I believe that the Land of Iron is the worst arc in all of Naruto.